Welcome back, my name is Devon Cook and I'm gonna be talking to you about the number one reason your house is not selling. Now, whether you're a real estate agent trying to get your listing sold that's been sitting on the market or you're the homeowner of said home trying to get your home sold and you're just not sure why it's not selling, I'm gonna tell you why it's not moving. Now, altogether, there are three very important and essential things that it takes to get your property sold. And the number one thing I'm gonna be sharing towards the end of this video. Now, each of these three things we call the three Ps. Number three is the product. Number two is the presentation or the positioning of said product. And number one, of course, the most important, which we're gonna get into depth on, is of course, the price. So first up, the product. The product is essentially the house that you're trying to sell. Is it a three bedroom, two bathroom house that's 1300 square feet in Dallas, Texas? Or is it a four bedroom, three bathroom, 2700 square feet condo in Miami? The product is what you're selling. And if your house is not selling, this is the first thing I'm gonna go to and say, hey, look at the product itself. And is there anything we can do to improve this product for the consumers, the people on the market to buy houses. And most often there's not gonna be a lot of changes you're going to do to the product that's going to help it sell. Just because most people don't wanna put money into the house in order to make it sell. And in order to improve the product, you typically have to pour money into it. Because how you improve the product is you replace the carpets, you put in hardwood floors, you convert the garage into a bedroom or vice versa, you build a deck outside or a pool, you do something to the house, to the product to make it more appealing. So if your house isn't selling or your listing isn't selling, go to the product itself and see if there's anything that you can do to just improve it. And if you're not willing to do that, then you're gonna go to the second option, the second P, which is the positioning. Now I've heard the positioning a lot of different ways. The positioning can also be deemed as the placement of the product. It can be deemed as the marketing that you're doing for the property or the presentation of the property. But the general idea with the positioning of the home is you want to show it in the best light possible to the most amount of buyers possible. So if your house isn't selling, look at how you're positioning this house on the market. Are you actually showcasing it well? Do you have iPhone photos for all of the photos on the listing? Or did you get a professional photographer? Did you make a video of the property? Do you have drone photos of the property showing the exact lot with the boundaries all outlined? Do you have the home properly staged? Or is there clutter everywhere? Is the garage full of junk and you have photos of your grandkids from three generations ago all over the walls. Because when you're selling your home, you need to start thinking about it not as your home, but more so as a hotel. You want the home to appeal to as many people as possible. That means that you need to go through your home or if you're the listing agent, you need to go to the home of your seller and have them remove anything that's religious, anything that's political, and anything that has their family's faces on the walls. And if you get someone in to stage the home, Home, they're going to help position the furniture and they may also bring in additional furniture or decorations to help the home just appear more welcoming to everyone that's coming through. And then also you need to look at what you're focusing on. Maybe this is a three bedroom home that's 1200 square feet and the rooms really aren't that large, but maybe it's in an excellent location with great shopping and also it has an amazing pool and a great backyard that would be well suited for dogs. That's a situation where you can focus in the listing on the location of the property, on the backyard, on the pool, and focus on the strengths of the property and help minimize the weaknesses that it has. So that's the second thing. After you've gone through the listing, you've looked at the product and you've decided, okay, well, maybe there's not so much that we can improve here. And then you've gone through the presentation of the product and you've decided, hey, well, we've done amazing photos. We are positioning it well. It seems to have gotten quite a bit of traffic, but we're just not getting very many or any offers at all. That's when you have to go back to the first P, which is of course the most important, the price. And I always go to the price last because many agents are just gonna reduce the price in order to get it sold faster. And often that definitely helps. However, if the product or the presentation of the property can be presented differently, then you can potentially get offers on your property sooner rather than just reducing the price and getting less money. But if you're not gonna improve the product and the presentation is really spot on, then that really only leaves you with one option if the house isn't selling, and that is adjusting the price. And the reason for that is simple. If your home is not selling, then the price is not compelling to today's market of buyers. And that's really simple because every home will sell for a certain 
price. And your job as the seller is just to find that price at which it's going to sell. And as a homeowner, you have really three different strategies to price your home. You have the first strategy, which is to take a look at the surrounding properties that are similar to yours, the comps, and then pricing it right in line with those comps that have recently sold on the market. This strategy is known as pricing with or right at the market level. And this quite honestly is what most sellers do. They look at everything else that's sold and then they say, hey, well, Johnny's house down the street sold for XYZ amount. And so I'm gonna sell also for XYZ amount. And strategy number two is to sell above the current market value for the property. And I typically see sellers do this when they feel that their property is completely 100% unique and they're looking for that unique unicorn buyer to come in and swoop up that property and pay that high price for the house. Now, I typically do not recommend this strategy, but some sellers choose to go with it. This is the strategy that's gonna cause your home to sit on the market for the longest, and it can be the most stressful of the three strategies. Now, the third strategy to price your home, and this is what the most savvy sellers use, and that is pricing the house just below current market value. And the reason this is such a good strategy is because what this does is this creates a bidding war for the home. Because buyers everywhere, they want a deal. Why do you think everyone goes crazy when JCPenney is selling for 40% off on the entire store? Why do you think we get mobs of people rushing Walmart and Best Buy on Black Friday? People want to feel like they're saving money on something that is actually worth more. And so by pricing your home just below current market value, you're gonna have your best chance of creating a bidding war and actually driving the price of that property over what the current market value is. So those are the three main strategies. And when you listed your house, whether you knew it or not, you did price the property in line with one of those strategies. And if the house has not sold and the product and the presentation is fine, then you've probably chosen the strategy where you price the home over the current market value, especially if it's been sitting for quite a while. So what you have to do here is you have to adjust the price, meaning you need to reduce the price of the property if you're looking to get it sold quickly. Because again, if the house is not selling, then the price is not compelling to today's market of buyers. Think about this example right here. Everyone knows that gas prices are going sky high throughout the country. And so say in your market that the average price of a gallon of gas is $4. And say you're driving down the road and you see a gas station and they have some balloons and they've got confetti and they've got streamers and fireworks and they even have a guy skydiving down from a plane landing on the gas station and they're just doing some crazy party, basically a carnival at this gas station. And all of this is in an effort to sell their $15 per gallon of gasoline. Well, let me ask you this. Are you actually gonna go spend $15 a gallon of gasoline on that gas station just because they're having a crazy party? Probably not, or at least I know I wouldn't. I would definitely go visit the party. I would go see what's happening, go see the carnival, see everything that's going on, but then I would leave and I would go fill up my gas tank with some cheaper gas that's around that $4 a gallon mark. And so this example really just showcases that you can have the best marketing in the world. You can do everything possible to showcase the house in the best light possible. But if the price is too high, no one is going to buy it. And so with that gasoline example, the presentation or the marketing is not gonna overcome a price that is too high. However, the price of the property can overcome the product and the presentation or the marketing of the home. Meaning if you price your home way below the market value, it doesn't matter what you do to present the property and the product in the best light, it will sell. Because if I took a property that was $10 million but then listed it at $1 million, even without putting any description, inaccurate information, zero photos, and no marketing whatsoever, that property would probably sell like that. And that's why you have this tier system to the three Ps, the product, the presentation, and then the price in order of importance, the price being the most important. So those are the three main things that are keeping your home from selling, the product, the presentation, and of course, number one, the price. As always, thanks for watching and let me know down below what questions you have about selling your home and I'll see you in the next one.